let's try another example. Let's take the P of 7 times 10 to the negative 4. Now we're going to take the P of 7 times 10 to the negative 4. What's your answer then? Three, uh, yeah, less than 12 times 10 to the minus 4 less than uh, plus 4. Okay, I'm not sure if I quite caught that. So, so what's your answer again? What's the answer to the question? It's, it's between 3 and 4. It's between 3 and 4. The problem was to figure out the P of this number. Well, the P of this number is between 3 and 4. Good. All right, and I think you used uh, the exact right notation there. So you, started with, so you started without writing down the P. We started with just the numbers without the P. Uh, and we don't compare this to 10 to the negative 5. This is between 10 to the negative 4 and 10 to the negative 3. Then you took the P of everything, and you remembered that when you take the P of the inequality, you have to flip the inequalities. Because again, um, the bigger the number is, the smaller its P is going to be. This was the biggest number, so it's going to have the smallest p. That's the most important thing to remember here. And this was the smallest number, so it's going to have the biggest p. That's the one big difference between taking the p of the number and taking the logarithm of the number, that you have to flip the inequality here. We didn't have to flip the inequalities when we took logarithms, because the biggest number also has the biggest logarithm, and the smallest number has the smallest logarithm, the one new thing that we have to do when we're taking the p is flip the inequality because the biggest number will have the smallest p and the smallest number will have the biggest p. And you saw that. Then it's very easy to take the p of something. The p is just the negative of its exponent. So the negative of the exponent here is positive 3. The negative of the exponent here is positive 4. All right, and that gave you your answer. The p of this number is between 3 and 4. And again, how would this come up on a chemistry problem? Well, you might have figured out in the problem that the hydronium concentration was 7 times 10 to the negative 4. And then you might have had to figure out the pH. Well, the pH is the P of the hydronium concentration, which would be the P of 7 times 10 to the negative 4. And we just figured out that that's between 3 and 4. So then you would say, that you can approximate the pH, the pH is between 3 and 4. So even though in textbooks they don't usually write the P right next to the number that you're taking the P of, that's actually a good habit for us for solving problems. Okay. All right, and here we get a pH between 3 and 4. So is this solution acidic or basic? Acidic. Because it's between 3 and 4. More or less acidic than uh, this solution. Or I mean this solution. Where, where is that? This solution here. Less acidic. Yeah. But this is more an ordinary case. I said it's not that bizarre for a pH to be negative. But it's certainly not the common case. Usually pHs are positive. So here we have a normal positive pH. It's less than 7, so we know we have an acidic solution here. Um, you can see why this is even more acidic, because this has about 10 to the squared protons. 
and this only has 10 to the negative 4 protons. So obviously this has way more protons than this solution here, so this should be way more acidic. In fact, it's so acidic it has a negative pH. Um, but most of the problems you'll do will be in this, in this case over here, uh, when you have a positive pH. But it shouldn't really matter whether we end up with a positive or a negative. If we have a good method, we should be able to get the right answer either way. Yeah. Uh, and you definitely can expect to see problems that test the limits of, of kind of what's ordinary, so it's good to be able to do it either way. Okay, that's good. Let's try two more examples. Let's take a look at uh, notes here. Let's take the P of this number. Great, so what's your answer? Okay, good. Okay, so the important thing you saw is that we have to put this into scientific notation. We can't take the P until we put this into scientific notation. Here's the right way to put this into scientific notation. Then uh, we don't compare this to 10 to the negative 5. It's between 10 to the negative 4 and 10 to the negative 3, so that's good. Then when we take the P of everything, you have to flip the inequality. The biggest number has the smallest P. But it was good that now we're getting into the habit of first writing down the numbers and only later, later taking the P. It's good to first just focus on the numbers and only when you're ready, then take the P's. And we have to remember to take the negative exponent when we take the P's. So you got the right answer. That this is between Three and four. And again, that's a pretty normal pH. So this would be a pretty normal hydronium concentration. This is a pretty normal hydronium concentration. By the way, notice this seems like a very small number, right? Yeah. But is this an acidic or basic solution? Acidic. Yeah. Even a, a pretty small amount of hydronium actually gives you an acidic solution. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't take that much hydronium to give you an acidic solution. It might seem like this is not much hydronium, but it's actually more acidic than is normal. It's more acidic than a neutral solution. Because remember that normally you only have 10 to the negative 7. Hydroniums. And here we have 10 to the negative 4. So even an acidic solution really doesn't have that many hydroniums uh, in it, usually. 